Right now we have OG on the show. We had yes, him sir. once before, but now we're having him again. And this time it's because he heard Riv's top 10 players of all time list and he saw that Wilt Chamberlain was not on there. So OG, what do you have to say for Riv? Riv has some explaining to do. His top 10 <laughs> list was not my issue. I, I really didn't have a problem with his top 10 list. My issue was when he said that Joker is better than Wilt Chamberlain. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute, me and this dude need to have a talk. And we don't need to have a talk in two weeks. We need to have a talk right now. So I need you to explain yourself, Riv, because I am all ears. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I have no remorse today. I'm gonna sit back and enjoy like I mean so the popcorn. The, the topic the topic at hand, we were talking about obviously we were talking about the top ten and then it, it gravitated towards the Joker. And I said what mm -hmm. I said was I think Joker is a better offensive player than Wilt Chamberlain. And when I said that, I'm taking everything into account. I'm looking at Joker's playmaking ability, the way he runs mm -hmm. his offense, the way he runs his team. I'm looking at his mm -hmm. shooting ability, and I'm saying, mm -hmm. yo, a player at this this size, being able mm -hmm. to shoot the three ball this effective, being able to shoot the mid-range, being able to playmake and be the, the, the point guard essentially for his team, I think he's probably – he's the best offensive center we've ever seen. And I think for Wilt, you know, I understand Wilt. Like, his numbers are incredible. His numbers are ridiculous. You can't they're, – they're in the records forever. You can't really disagree with the numbers. But I'm looking at it from the Joker. Like, the Joker's playmaking ability, he's the best playmaking center ever. He's one of the best shooting centers ever. Like, I think from an offensive standpoint, looking at everything, I just thought the Joker is a – he is a better offensive player than Wilt Chamberlain, in my opinion. So – so since we since we're on the subject of being a better all around offensive player, we'll discuss. We'll start the conversation with him leading the league in assists. The year he led the league in assists, no, he didn't not. lead the league. He didn't lead the league in assists per game. There's nobody in the game that year who had more assists than him at the five. Now that was because he had reporters saying to him, "Not you can't pass. You don't pass. Oh, I don't pass. We'll get to the bottom of that right now." Now. You discussed him being, I believe you discussed him being, uh, I mean, you talked about Joker shooting the long ball. I'm pretty confident that in 1967, if they had a long ball, Wilt would have started shooting the long ball because he did everything else. I'm not saying that he did this yeah. or he did that. Wilt did everything else. In addition to him leading the league, by the way, in rebounding the year that he led the league in assists, he also led the league in field goal percentage too. So which yeah. means he was the most efficient guy that year. He also led the league in minutes. All right. So that's number three. Number four, I listen to zero slander from Wilt. And the reason why, and this is not to say that you slandered him. I listen to zero slander from Wilt simply because every major record in NBA history. And by the way, Wilt Chamberlain retired the year that I was born, which is the year the New York Knicks won the NBA championship. So we're talking <laughs> 50 years almost. Every major record in NBA history either has Wilt's name attached to it because he holds it or he held it. All right. So, again, the year that we're talking about with Joker, I, guess, I think this is in year seven that we're talking about. Right yeah, now. I believe so. I think, jo I think Joker goes 25, 14 or 25, 13 and I think almost eight. Well, in year eight, Wilt went 24, 24 and almost nine. And by the way, I want to make sure that we clear Joker leads. I think he leads the league this year in, in triple doubles. He had 15. Mm. Wilt had 30 of them that year. Not only did he have 30 that year, he almost had. Not almost. I take that back. There's only two guys in NBA history to have a 20, 20, 20 game. I, be, I believe Russell Westbrook did it yep. in 2019. A, a double, take a triple, guess, double. Will, yeah. Take a, take, take, a, take a guess who's the other guy who did it. Oh, Will probably did it. <laughs> and not only did he probably do it, he almost did it again that year when he <laughs> went 27, 19, and 22 in the same season. Now, let me right? ask you. Let so, me, okay, so when we talk about a guy who I could listen to – I could probably defend guys like Jordan. I could defend guys like James. I could defend a bunch of guys. But whenever I hear Wilt, Wilt is a completely different guy to defend. And there's really no slander that I'm listening to from him. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me ask you a question. Because you, you threw out, first of all, that was great. You did great. You did awesome. <laughs> you did incredible. I'm, I'm, you did great. You had, you had me for a little bit. You threw up a lot of numbers. You don't think, com like, comparing just bland statistics from the 50s and the 60s to now 
is a, is a little bit misconstrued. Like, cause you're talking about Wilt did this. Like, he he averaged, he led the league in assists, which is a great mm-hmm. accomplishment. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like mm-hmm. I'm minimizing or knocking mm-hmm. his statistics. I don't. But there there's there's definitely a way to kind of like use today's numbers and kind of use the back in the day numbers and kind of like mm-hmm. make it to where yeah, mm-hmm. it meet to, in the middle. To piggyback off that, the the pace of play in the '60s was. Outrageous! I think they were averaging like 140 possessions per game. Now mm-hmm. we're at like 100. If you adjust for that and you look at per 36 numbers or even per mm-hmm. 100 possession per possession numbers, Jokic and Wilt, their numbers are neck and neck. At least what we've seen from prime Jokic. I think um, the pace of play and mm-hmm. that's it, unfair it's, to, it's, com- to to compare errors though. It's really I mean, unfair. This is what we have to do. Even if. Even if you did compare errors, like what you just said, his numbers and Joker's numbers are neck and neck. So how do we view Joker today? What do we think of Joker today? He's one of the best players in the league. Not one of the best players in the league. He, you can make the argument he's the best player in the game. Is that Absolutely. correct? Yeah. Right now, yeah. So yeah. we're talk, so, so we talking about Will would be arguably the best player in the game today if he was playing today. He was now, way better defensively. And we talking about the fifties. I mean, Will played half. Of, Will played half of the fifty nine season. So it's like he played the sixties yeah. and the seventies. And by the way, Will also played for the Globe Trotters. He won the sideshow. Will is one of the most skilled players <clears throat> in the history of the NBA. When we talking about a guy who he wasn't just standing under the basket dunking the basketball. I mean, where you think Shaq got that turnaround oh, mid range from? Mm-hmm. Got that from Chamberlain, mm-hmm. right? Where you think where you think Shaq got the mid range in the mid post that hook from? He got that from Chamberlain. I'm pretty confident if there was a three point line, Chamberlain would have he would have at least attempted to shoot that. And I think he would have been good at it, just knowing what kind of player he is and what kind of overall talent he was. I don't think that there's anything he would not have been good at. You know what? You can't shoot the three. He probably would have led the league in three point percentage or some nonsense like that once they gave it to him. The the clip on TikTok didn't do Riv justice because the first thing that came out of his mouth was <laughs> Jokic is better than Will Chamberlain. But the debate that day was we were just comparing offensively because we know Wilt defensively, he's far ahead of where Jokic is and ever will be. Mm-hmm. We, were, we weren't comparing resumes at all time. It was just strictly skill offensively. Mm-hmm. And although you say that Wilt would have developed it, we have to look at what he was and he didn't have that in his game where Jokic does have the shooting in his game. He Even though Wilt led the league in assists, Jokic, mm-hmm. I think, just from eye test alone, is a better passer but everything else in terms of athleticism, finishing at the basket, I think you give to Wilt. But we were mm-hmm. simply comparing offensive skill sets. Yeah. And once again, when you talk about offensive skill set, like I just said, you know, Wilt play for the Globetrotters. Mm-hmm. You don't play for the Globetrotters as a sideshow. You have to have some unique skill, right. especially at Wilt's size, in order to play for them and to just do and keep up with everything that they were doing. And that translated to the floor. I mean, like I said, Wilt led the league in assists. The year before that, he averaged almost eight assists a game again. Yep. So it wasn't like it was an anomaly that he did that. So it was in succession that he did that. So, but I will tell you this, Riff, your man set you up because he had you on there saying, "Will Jokic is better." <laughs> That's how he had the clip set up. So he set you up. That was the downside. That is how you came across too, which is why I wasn't even arguing it. Well, yeah, I mean... That's that's what you said, and JC yeah, interpreted it that way, too. Yeah, I mean, which is why, if you watch the whole thing, nah, I'm just, definitely like, completely said that's why we at a loss for words. I'm going to keep it 100. The Joker is better than Will. Like, that's <laughs> he didn't what he say, he, 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 he didn't stutter when he said it, neither. He, did he, said, he said it, it all. Like, there's no question. There's no reason why we should be having this conversation. Joker is better than Will. Like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. So you had no problem with this top 10 list. Are you mad that he left Wilt off it? You're talking to me? Well, wait a minute. OG. Riv, Yo. Riv, can you can you run down your top 10 list one more time for me? So okay, so yeah, I had LeBron, I had MJ. No order, because I'm, I'm not doing order. I had LeBron, I okay, had MJ, fine. I had Kobe, I had Shaq, I had Akeem, I had Tim Duncan, I had Larry Bird, I had Bill Russell, and um, Magic Johnson, of course. Yeah, Magic. I had nine. Mm-hmm. Who's my 10? Hakeem Olajuwon. He said, him, he said him already. Kareem said, said Tim Kareem. Duncan. Kareem. 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 You had Jabal. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, here's the thing. A lot of people, they, with the first three guys, Jordan, James, Jabal, I've never been one to have an issue with any of that. Agreed. You could have James, Jordan, Jabal. You could have Jabal, Jordan, James. I agree. I have no problem with that. It gets tricky for people when we talk about, you know, from, from four to 10. Mm-hmm. So I don't think so. I don't have a. I, nah, think, I, think I, think, I think the four clean, for like me personally, is Jordan, Jabbar, 
LeBron Magic. Magic. I think those yeah. are the four. Yeah. I'm like, with you. Those there. are the four See, best but, players but in people, history. People will throw Bill Russell in that four spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just off championships, off of impact to defense. That's fair. I mean, that's what I said. That me era. personally, like those are the four for me. Like oh, those listen, are the guys. I'm in agreement. Those are the consensus best players at their position. Like yeah. those are the guys who, like you look at the guys Good coming point. up. There's like you have to do a lot to pass them, and people try to put yep. Tim Duncan in the five, but I wouldn't put Tim Duncan in the five. But like Kareem, what he did at the center position, and then mm-hmm. Magic, the way he just dominated his position. Like that's why I say those are the four that I would just put clean. And then it, you're right, it gets right. tricky after. Like I have Wilt in my top twelve, but I don't right. have him in my top ten. I got Wilt that well, and and that's the same idea how you feel about Kobe. I got yeah. Wilt four. I have Wilt four, and I got Bill Russell five. And the reason why I have Wilt four is because, like I talked to you a, a little while ago, mm-hmm. every major record in NBA history has Wilt. And you can't talk about the NBA in history and not talk about Wilt Chamberlain. Everything we're talking about a, a guy who the Celtics from 1960 to 1969 they ran the decade. Only one team beat them. Wilt was on that team. Right. We have a team in the 1970s who has the all-time record for consecutive wins, which is still a record to this day. Yep. 33 straight wins. Wilt was the starting five men on that team, right? We're mm-hmm. talking about a guy yeah. who who averaged the most points in NBA history. That would be Michael Jordan. Well, whose record did he break? That would be Wilt. You know, who averages the most rebounds in NBA history? That's Wilt. Who had the most rebounds in an NBA game? That would be Wilt pulled down 55 boards in the game. Not only did he pull down 55 boards in the game, he pulled them down against arguably the best defensive player in the history of the game and Bill Russell. Right? We're talking about a guy. I, I can go all I can go all day long about Will about Will Chamberlain. But number five, who I had with Bill Russell, the reason why I caught a lot of heat for this was because well, what if he couldn't do that today? I don't care about any of that. The criteria <laughs> that you guys had, the criteria that I seen when it came to the top 10 primarily was winning right bill russell with the exception of maybe michael phelps mark spitz uh michael schumacher jeff gordon he is the greatest winning player in the history of sports yeah he's the greatest winning team player in the history of sports you're talking about a guy who played 13 years 12 of those 13 years he was in the nba finals and one in 11 talking about a guy who was who was the league mvp five times well he never averaged 20 actually he averaged 20 he averaged 20 and 20 twice in the playoffs I mean, what's the narrative? What's the narrative today on a guy who goes thirty and forty in Game Seven of the NBA Finals? How are we talking about? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, to, to to say to if we come on here Monday after se- Game Seven is Saturday and we come on here Monday and I don't know, Joker went thirty and forty in Game Seven. How are we talking about Joker? One of the greatest. OG only only issue I have is Magic at six. The, the way that he transcended basketball, the way that he and Larry Bird together helped save basketball, his five NBA championships to win at all levels, to come in and immediately have that impact that he had, to be the greatest mm-hmm. passer of all time. Mm-hmm. Have him at six, especially... Uh, it, it's tough I'm for me. I'm glad you mentioned that. It's I'm tough for me to sit with that. that just because I have Magic at four, and that's no mm-hmm. slight to Wilt, that's no slight to Bill Russell. Mm-hmm. I just think I look at Magic and the way that he helped save basketball, the way that he helped revolutionize the point mm-hmm. guard position. It's hard for me to have him outside that top five. And that's a valid argument. And I counter that argument, what, what you just said about him being an impact right from the beginning. I mean, Will, not only did he win rookie of the year, he also won league MVP. He was 37 and 24, his first year in the league. No doubt he was and dominant. That, and, and that went on for his entire career. No just doubt. Just like Magic did, right? Correct. That, that went on for his entire career. That's why I have when I have Magic at six, and I it, and it's not like I have these guys at six definitively. When I say definitively, it's not like you know it's no question. Mm-hmm. It's by a hair. Right. It's not like it's a situation where these guys, this guy is here, this guy is there. I mean, it's it's by a hair. I mean, I I, I get a lot of flack for you know you have no idea how good KD is. You have no idea how good Larry Bird was. You have no idea. We're talking about a guy who was from the beginning, which is very important to me. I take being an all NBA performer very seriously. Mm -hmm. That means that you were elite, not just elite for one year, for two years. You were elite for a long time. You were the best. You were of the best players in the game. Larry Bird was first team all NBA as a rookie. And he proceeded to make all NBA nine straight years after that first team. That's a big deal to me. So, so can you run off your top 10 real quick? My top 10 in order. James, Jordan, Jabbar, Chamberlain, Russell, Magic, Bird, Duncan, Lajuan, Diesel. Where's Kobe? He's 11. Right behind I Diesel agree. at 11. I... Right behind him at 11. 
So Olajuwon at nine? You said Olajuwon mm-hmm. at nine? Why is Kobe at, at why, why is Kobe out of the top ten? Well, Kobe is out of the top ten simply because when I look at the guys before him, so for example, we talk about winning, mm-hmm. right? We talk about winning. Well, three of those five championships that he has, he wasn't the best player on the team. That would go to the Diesel. And not That's only will true. it go to the Diesel, Diesel was the most dominant player in the game for a long time. I'm trying to think of what year can you tell me definitively that Kobe Bryant was the best player in the game? I, th- I think there was a four year span where he was the best. Oh, nine. Now, when you. 2010. Oh, 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 nine. So, oh, nine. I'll say, oh, seven, it was oh, nine. Oh, seven, oh, nine. You can make the argument. Now, you can make the argument that he was the best player. When I look at Hakeem Olajuwon in the 93 94 season, it wasn't a question. He was the best player in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was not a question. In the 94 95 season, even though what David Robinson did, even though what Barkley did, Hakeem was even the though best. how good Scotty Pippen, Hakeem Olajuwon was the best player in the game. Add that to the fact that we're talking about a guy. When he retired in 02, points in the top 10 in points, rebounds, blocks, and steals. These are how many guys in the history of the NBA can say that they've done that before him and since him. Nobody has done that. And we're talking about a guy who's been dominant for, for a long time. Now, once again, I get a lot of heat for Kobe Bryant being outside the top 10. And the reason why is because, which burns me, by the way, mm-hmm. is because he ain't around no more. And, and that makes me even more nuts. And the reason why it makes me nuts, Riv, is because, and this doesn't specifically mean you, yeah. but if you felt like that about this dude, why wouldn't you talking like that about him? That's when a he fact. Around? Because I, agree. I remember I was, I was around in 2002 when Kobe Bryant, who had a dream of winning the All-Star Game MVP in his hometown at no point was him getting booed in his hometown a part of that dream. I'm certain of that. At no point. I was around when Kobe Bryant got arrested. We didn't even know what it was about, but everybody was slandering him, calling him this, calling him that. When he, that love that you guys have for him now, he needed it then. I was around in 07 when he had gotten knocked out of the playoffs for the second time in a row in the first round and demanded to be traded because the Lakers were doing such a terrible job building that team around him. I was around during that and he was catching a lot of heat for that. A lot of heat for that. So the love that 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 that's shown to him today, it burns me, man. Because if you felt like that about him, where were you when he needed you the most? That's that's a valid point. And just to move on, just to move on uh, from this topic, we want to talk about top teams in the East and West. And mm-hmm. what team do you see right now in both conferences that you look at and you're like, they're making the finals. I, I still think, to be honest with you guys, I think it's going to be a rematch of last year. I think it's going to be Milwaukee and Phoenix again. This I guy's think a smart dude. The, the road to the NBA championship goes through Milwaukee. I think Phoenix is the most complete team in the game. Um, Ooh. 25, 20, Phoenix has 25 games left. I think that the Warriors have a really good opportunity to make up some ground, but I still think when they're healthy, I think that they're the best team in the Western Conference. I look at what Milwaukee has done. I still stand on it that I think that uh, Giannis is the best player in the game and when I look at what they've done and how stacked the East is and for them to be with the injuries that they've had to Middleton no doubt. with Drew Holiday being, being in and out of the lineup with Giannis early being in and out of the lineup and for them to still be I think two games out of first place in the East two and a half, now, two and a half <laughs> games out of first place now we're talking about a conference which when I think about it today, it reminds me of the 80s when I was coming up. When the Eastern Conference, you might have to win 50 games just to get in the playoffs because it's a nightmare. It's a complete nightmare. But with that being said, I look at Miami. I look at Chicago. I don't think Cleveland is there yet. I think that they're on their way. With the, with the addition of James Harden in Philadelphia, James Harden has proven time and time again when we get deep into the playoffs, he's going to fold. Or he's going to break down. He's proven that to me. So there's no reason <laughs> for me to believe otherwise. Because and I'm and Rib, I'm not going off of like hate or anything like that. No, I'm going we, off the evidence. Oh no, we're laughing. The evidence, we're, we're laughing because our, our boy Joel here absolutely James Harden adores Harden, James. Right? Harden. Well, we have a James Harden jersey right here. That's Harden. No, not <laughs> the, me. The, you. The, the, the evidence has sh- the evidence has shown me the further along we get into the playoffs, you are going to break down or you're going to fold. You've shown me that. So until you show me different, I can't bet on him. Mm-hmm. I really, even though he's looked great. With Joel Embiid, what it reminds me of is it reminds me of that relationship that just starts out. You know, these two look great, but give it a couple of months and you're, you're going to start to hear the rumblings and mm-hmm. you're going to see this thing fall apart because that's what the history of it has been. Now, again, Milwaukee, 
I think that Milwaukee is the, the team to come out of the Eastern Conference strictly because Drew Holiday is arguably the best perimeter defender in the game. Mm-hmm. Even though Thibault has something to say about that, I think that uh, Drew Holiday is the best perimeter defender in the game, and I think that he thwarts o- offenses just just by his pickup defense from point point A to point B. Um, Giannis is going to give you Giannis's play increases as the playoffs go on. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sold on Boston because I look at Boston like I look at the Knicks. I think that they're Ooh. dynamic, but they're missing something. Now, when I say that, now, now I don't mean when I say I look at them like the I know Knicks, what you I mean. mean I know what you mean. They don't, they're not the same team. I just look at them like I think that they're missing something. I don't they're know. Jason there. Tatum is that different caliber type of player, and and Jalen Brown's one of the best Robins in the NBA in terms of offensively, defensively. You couldn't ask for more out of a ball player. And defensively, they're one of the best offensive teams in the Eastern Conference. They really He's are. One though. of the best Robins in the NBA. In terms of who would you want to be your number two in terms of offense and defense? He I think is we one can probably better. name ten better number twos than Jalen Brown. I'm more I'm complete. Proven. Name I'm proven. more complete. Name more complete. James Harden. I think you're James Harden. Is James Harden a Robin? James Harden. Yes. James, James Harden is Harden's not the best player on I think Philly, you're bro. About in terms of talent, yes, but he hasn't proven. Put the mic closer. To Kyrie he Irving. Hasn't proven like that. He's Wait, one of the about best. James Harden, Kyrie Irving. Complete Robins. Name name complete. James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis. James Anthony Davis is, is made of glass, so we already know that. Oh, so you ain't got to be mean like that. <laughs> Wait, but he's but they won a championship him. with him as a Robin. Chris right? Paul, they did. yeah. So I don't think that. Well, who I think who would you classify as a Robin it, on Phoenix? Chris it, Paul or Debo? Well, that's what I was just getting ready to ask you. I don't know if Chris Paul is Robin. Well, I, I, think, think, D-book I think he's probably Batman. D-book and D-book D-book or Chris Paul. And I think Debo. I think D. I think he's. I think Chris Paul is actually Batman, and I think that D. Book is maybe Iron Man. Because I'm not, I don't think he's a number two. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm I, looking at Harden. I'm looking at MB. These are both number ones. I understand what yeah. you're saying that they're mm-hmm. that Harden's but now going to step what into I'm, that. I guess what I'm saying is that I can name ten better number two options than Jalen Brown. Ten might be strong. I can name at least five though. Yeah, I agree. He's just too complete. I love his game. Is he yeah. better? Is he better than Kai? Is he better than Kyrie as a number two? He's Ka- not better Kai than Kyrie. Kai offensively is one of the best. Players is he better than Demar Derozan or Zach Levine, whichever you want to put at one and two? No. Okay, you we're talking from a complete sense. Is there a more complete? I'm Paul just talking George. about second options. Bro. Okay, yeah, that is that is the first Paul one that George. we said that I fully agree. Okay, I'm just talking about second options, bro. I'm not talking about it's two a different players. conversation. Paul George and AD would be the two that, in terms of complete, Paul George. Okay, and I'm gonna AD. take AD out just because he hasn't played. Well, yeah, he's made a glass, but why, why can't we say plays? Kyrie? I'm, I'm, talking, asking, no, I'm, I'm talking. No, I'm, I'm agreeing no, with no, you. I'm asking, I'm Kyrie, asking him. I'm asking. I'm talking complete. Player in terms of offense and defense. So I guess Kyrie's offense is, is so much better than Jalen Brown. So I he's done it as a second option. No, no, no. It's so much he's better than done his. it. He's done it. He's won a championship. He's done I, it. Yeah. What you're he's saying is whoa, 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 whoa. He's done it with James. Don't make it sound like it's consistent. He averaged he 28. In, he averaged he 28 amazing. in the finals. He, he did his part. Hey, I'm with you. He outplayed the MVP. Who? Kyrie Irving outplayed Steph Curry in the finals. I apologize. I thought you were talking about with James. Make sure you make. Don't leave that. Yeah, but without Kyrie, they're not winning that title either. Though I get LeBron was the best player but without Kyrie's I, contributions they're not winning that right? chip I, and I won't argue that what has Jalen Brown done as as a second option I, I, I know he's, it's he's no I know about talent I'm so sorry, like they, we can't talk you have to talk about well, like talent well, wait a and, minute they, they were in the Eastern Conference Championship twice with those two guys it's not like they just and the guys that I named won championships that Anthony Davis and Kyrie Irving won championships with as the LeBron, second best player though with LeBron that's still the second best player though it's it is, you can't take that away that's specifically the question was a Robin I do have a question. Do you think that Boston would benefit more if they had Draymond Green instead of Jalen Brown? You got it. Nah, hell no. I'm being <laughs> that's no an way. honest question. No way. <laughs> you got to stop. <laughs> they're a middle of the pack offense. He if you can, add Draymond in there, they're going to be a bottom five guard. offense, bro. OG, I got a question for you. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> well, Jason, Tatum is, I just, Jason Tatum is my favorite player under 25. I just want to. He's wanna tough. Sure that I, I do want to. I, I, I do want your take on it though. Do you believe how many how many Robins are there in the NBA? That are more complete than Jalen Brown, Paul George. I'm with you. Anthony Davis when healthy. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Name another. Zach Levine or Demar. I'm not, I'm not complete. Too. Zach is a two way player. I, I, I think Jalen. I think Jalen mm-hmm. Brown is going to be an all league defender at some not point. Not to the not I to the level of Jalen Brown. Brown. I know. I, 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 I do <laughs> believe. I do believe Jalen Brown is going to be an all league. Bam Adebayo or Jalen Brown. I'm taking Jalen. Oof. Ooh, that's it depends on it's position. a good conversation. Bam's got defense of really, the year. Wait, hold on, hold on. Conversation. If we're if we're talking about no, nah, actually, I'm not gonna mention it. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna get shut down. So cool. wait, why why can't we say James Harden just for the sake of the argument? Because he is the second best player on Philly, My playing behind is, Joel Embiid, was playing like the best player in the world. I'm looking at these two, and I think they're both 
ones. They're both. But, the, but there's got to be the best player on you one don't team. Think there's a, you don't think there's an but, argument but like that on Jay- Philly, who's the best player? If you were to say Joel Embiid. Thank you. So there has to be. Wait, hold on, hold on. Before, you, before you go, Drew, you don't think there's an argument that Jalen Brown could be a number one option on multiple teams in the NBA? So is he really a Robin if that's the right, case? Right, but he's playing with Jason Tatum. So James Harden is playing with Joel Embiid. Scotty so Pippen could have went to another team and been a one. However, he stayed and played his role. I know. And that, that's that one year he think was a one, Riv. That's why I'm struggling that one year here he because think you say name a better Robin, but, but that's just Scottie naming Pippen the second be the best, best player on the team. On the championship team. No, You're telling me I can't do that. A more complete Robin. That's my that's my statement, and that's what you haven't been able to answer for me. No, then the question is... You can't name more two-way players that are better than Jalen Brown. I, I agree. But there are definitely that players are that are second options that are better than Jalen Brown. Definitely. But James Harden is one of them. Yeah, y'all second arguing. options offensively. I guess that's the logic. That, okay. No, second, if, if second, that's... Second, second, second players offensively. All right, I can get with that that's, There you go. And that's OG, 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 so, I, look, I love the Phoenix pick. Since last year, I've been defending them because people were saying it was a fluke run. Now they've opened up their eyes to it's not. It was not just Riv. It was, I, know, I mean, I know. the entire this basketball, at our, at our the, the entire basketball was, community was disrespectful to Phoenix. But I just have a hard time thinking they're going to get past a healthy Golden State. I think Golden State is just a way better team. Yeah, I, I way think better. way better. I think so. Crazy. I know the series is going to go to the lengths of it, but I think when it comes down to it, I have my money on Golden State if they are healthy. Okay, so if they're healthy, what sways you toward Golden State? Well, for one, they have Steph. Um, okay. I, but even then, I think Steph is not enough, but now that you have Clay back, you have that mm-hmm. added spacing. Andrew Wiggins is a lockdown defender Draymond. and is a really good offensive um, player. Draymond mm-hmm. Green, one of the best defenders and passers in the NBA, just having mm-hmm. his presence on the floor as an enforcer is huge to them. And then off the bench, I think you can argue they have one of the best benches in the NBA Jordan mm-hmm. Poole is better than anybody off of Phoenix's bench, in my opinion. Kaminga, maybe, too. And Jonathan Kaminga is coming up there as well. <clears throat> I like JTA. I like Yair Payne, who doesn't even play anymore. Like, they have so many guys off the bench that I depth. think they have more depth than Golden State. But even and if Phoenix. even if they're just narrowing their lineup down to eight players, or if they have to narrow down to six and seven, I think their first six or seven is better than Phoenix's. Well, when I think about what Phoenix has in terms of a floor general in Chris Paul, mm-hmm. I think that he's the difference in what Phoenix is doing. He makes them a more complete team. He's mm-hmm. their uh, he's their Patrick Mahomes, right? He's their quarterback. He's their guy that makes them go offensively and defensively. If they would get DeAndre Ayton more involved in the offense, I think that it would be impossible for Golden State. They're still not sure what they're doing with Wiseman. If they would if we if they were to get Wiseman in the lineup, then we may, I may be able to have that conversation with you, but they're still not sure exactly what they're doing with him and I don't think Aiton, I don't think Draymond Green as good as a defensive player he is. I don't think he could deal with Aiton when Chris Paul gets him involved in the offense the way he gets him involved in the offense. Ooh. Now you mentioned being on the bench. The fact that they got oh. Tory Craig back, that's huge. That is the huge. fact that they have the ha- the fact that they got Cam Johnson. 100%. I think that that's even better for them, 100%. right? 100%. Um Cameron Payne, he's been up now, and down. Like, yeah, Cameron Payne has been up and down, but he's when been you hurt. talk about a guy in Jordan Poole being better than all of them, I don't know if he's better than Cameron. I don't know if he's better than Cameron Johnson. That's I think fact. he's in a better situation than what Cameron Johnson is in. Now, I will admit, and I will not falter with this: whenever you call the Golden State Warriors for a trade and you mention Kaminga, you're getting hung up on. I'm just letting you know that right now, <laughs> they're not interested in dealing with him at all. He is not available. Do not ask. For he's him. a problem. If he was on another. T- if he was on another team, no question in my mind. He would, he would be up for rookie of the year, no, no doubt. doubt about it. But when I look at what Phoenix is doing, and I look at their bench, I mean, Biombo looked like if Chris Paul had him since the beginning of the season, <laughs> he might be an all-star. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what, what the hell are we looking at? I, I didn't know he was a pick-and-dive guy like that because I had never seen that in Toronto. I didn't yeah. see that in Charlotte. He wasn't playing with a lead guard like Chris Paul. I understand that part. But I mean, yeah, would that I, also be – with that? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I love Cam Johnson, but do you think that him and Otto Porter are kind of in the same tier right now? No, I think he's better than Otto. I think Cam Porter. Johnson's a bit better, but I don't think it's it's a significant drop. I think their roles are the same. I don't, I don't yeah, like their the disrespect on Cam Johnson. Cam's shooting forty four percent from the three, so he's, he's a sniper. sniper. He, he is, is. and sniper. his defense is great. So you pick you pick the Suns, and being as this whole table, let's go to the East real quick. Being as this whole table, for the most part, you know, Joel's is a Philly guy. Me and mm-hmm. Drew were the Bulls guys, and he's the Nets guy. Whoa. Bulls. Well, I'm, I'm. Well, he's rooting for the Bulls to come out the East. That's no, I'm not. Saying. Who'd you pick? I said Milwaukee. Oh, pardon Mil- me. No, that's all right. He's a Milwaukee guy. He thinks pardon Drew me. thinks it's going to be Phoenix and Milwaukee. In Correct. The so, I do. What, what would you could say like for me, Bulls, Philly, Nets, Bucks? What would be like the one weakness come playoff time for each team for us? 
It's well, a good when question. I think about what the bull, when I think about what the Bulls did in terms of this is why I think that DeMar DeRozan has to be seriously considered for league MVP because we're talking about an Eastern Conference that's way tougher than it's ever been and they've been decimated with injuries losing True. Ball right losing uh, Williams Caruso um, losing all losing Caruso and Levine DeMar DeRozan some time. has held these guys DeMar DeRozan has basically held these guys together with glue and tape and they're still at the top of yeah, the Eastern Conference. True. The problem that I'm having with them, so I don't think that they're better than Philadelphia. And the reason why is because that muscle in the middle is going to kill them. I think that Joel Embiid is going to destroy them and they'll have a counter for that. And I dig Vooch. I'm a huge Vooch guy, but I don't think, and, and getting Tristan Thompson, that's not enough. And the reason why that's not enough because he doesn't provide offense yep. that they need for this little band aid ca- for, for, ca- for countering. Uh, what Joel B brings them. And now to bring in James Harden, the playmaker that he is, I think that they could be pushed over the top with Chicago. Now, when I think about Philadelphia, the one question that I have with them is, can these guys hold up? I don't think talent is a question. Can Joel B hold up? Can James Harden hold up? That's the million dollar question with them more than anything. Brooklyn, I've said this, and I'm going to stand on it. The fact that they, it, you could actually go back to a video that I made when they got stomped, when Brooklyn got stomped in December by Miami and everybody was talking about uh, Kyrie Irving to Philadelphia for Ben Simmons. And I said, how about you call up the Philadelphia 76ers and you ask for Andre Drummond? And the reason why is because Rebound. he was playing behind. He was playing behind Joel Embiid and he wasn't really playing. I think I think Drummond is a starter on a mm-hmm. playoff team. I absolutely believe that. But the problem is, is that with Brooklyn, I don't think you guys have enough time to get back together what you had. I mean, we're talking about the playoffs starting in what, six weeks? Yeah, so like COG, I, but I don't think I, it's I, enough time. I feel pretty okay. similarly. I'm sorry. No, I know ahead, it's your squad. No, go ahead. I feel similarly. However, we hold KD to this standard that he is, when on when on the court, right, supposedly <laughs> the best basketball player in the world. Listen, I still, have, I still have LeBron. I still have Giannis. That being said, we saw LeBron in 18 have a completely new team after the trade deadline. It's similar here. They have a, com- a completely new starting five, aside from KD and Kyrie Irving. Now, KD's health is a definitely the primary concern right now. But now you're bringing in Ben Simmons, who helps clean up the defensive side of things, gives you a little bit of size. You add Andre Drummond, who helps who helps you down low, gets you, gets you your rebounds, can give you mm-hmm. some kind of offensive work down low. If KD is who everyone says he is, is it not fair for me to at least... Well, I expect expect them to make this run. No, nope. absolutely, you it's fair because it, and don't shortchange James because that roster wasn't just flipped at the trade deadline. It was flipped in the summer before that too. So it got mm-hmm. flipped in the summer, no doubt. And then it got flipped again at the trade deadline, and he still managed to drag that team. We had it D Wade, no doubt, and absolutely, and that and Derek Rose, and that and it got flipped again, and he still managed to drag that team to the NBA Finals. For so sure. with that being said, I mentioned this a couple of months a couple of months ago, and. I also got some flat for it, and I and I flipped the question around to you guys. Are we starting to see the end of the beginning of the end of KD? What I mean when I say that is, he's got the sprained MCL this season, right? Broke Last season he had the hamstring. Yep, he broke his foot. Missed half too. the season. The year before that, the Achilles. He missed a year and a half, and now this is where we are. And KD is thirty three years old. His skill set is still without question. Right. I think his skill set is still without question. The question is, is are we starting to see the beginning of the end of KD? And the reason why I ask you that, Rev, is because Brian is your guy. And when Brian tore up his Achilles, the next year it was the shoulder. And then after the shoulder, it was the knee. And then after the knee, he just he was around 33, 34 years old. So are we starting to see the beginning of the end of KD? I I wouldn't I would say no, because the difference with Kobe was Kobe was a little bit older, and when Kobe came back, you can see his game wasn't the same. With Kevin Durant, with every injury he gets, is is like he may be at injury risk, but with every injury he gets, he comes back. It looks like he plays. He's better. he's at an even better yeah. level mm-hmm. when he when he left. So I think with Kevin Durant, like you said, his skill set is never in question, and the fact that his skill set is the way it is, he's a guy who takes a lot of jump shots. He's very finesse like player. I think. The way he plays, he'll always be fine from the skill aspect. Now, if he's mm-hmm. the the problem with it, like you said, is injuries. Is he always going to keep getting hurt? Keep getting hurt. But I think this year, 
it was a little different because he had to carry Brooklyn. You know, him having to carry Brooklyn this year, Harden not playing to the best of his ability, Kyrie, Kyrie not being there. <coughs> Joe you Harris know, was out too. Joe Harris being out. It's like with those guys being out, Katie had to do a lot more carrying. He didn't, mm -hmm. and coming into this year, he didn't think he would have to do. Mm -hmm. Harden was supposed to be there. Kyrie was supposed to be there. So I think if the team is right and the team is fit well, I think Katie, they'll be able to kind of do what people do with Kawhi. You know, load, manage, kind of send him out. So to, so come playoff time, he will be healthy because that's when you need him the most. Now, with that being said, and I don't mean to interrupt you guys, but with that being said, to answer your question, yes, I do expect you, KD, to do that. You know why? Because that's the standard that the best player on the planet Ooh, is held talk. to. That's the standard that Giannis was held to. That's the standard that James was held to. You figure it out. You get it done. I'm not listening to, well, they got traded. Well, he got hurt. You know why I'm not listening to that? Because if that happened to James, he would have been held to a completely different standard. And he would have gotten that. roasted for that. So I'm not listening to any logic if they get bounced in round one. Well, he got hurt. And he got bounced in round one. And he didn't play well. Or they didn't just, they didn't mesh. Well, it just didn't work because they weren't together long enough. I'm not listening to none of that. The reason why is because the best player on the planet, James, the best player on the planet, Giannis, the best player on the planet, Matt, all of these guys were held to that same standard and they did their jobs. I think something Brooklyn fans can be excited about is that when you look at the roster construction, specifically Kyrie and KD, those mm -hmm. are two players that they don't need time to mesh with the team per se because they're players, they're ISO driven, and you don't need, like Golden State, that it takes time to mesh in that offensive system. With Brooklyn, it's not going to be that. It's give Kyrie, KD the ball, ISO, have spacing around them. If somebody helps, you kick it out, and that's basically it. That's going to be their offense, and that's what it's been with yeah. Steve Nash. It makes it a little tough, though, given the fact that you're going to have Ben Simmons on the court a good portion of those times, and you do want to, in my opinion, what gives them mm -hmm. the best chance to win is if you have Ben Simmons running a similar role to how Draymond plays. Now, I understand what you're saying with the isolation basketball, but... Kevin Durant was open to playing a different style of basketball with Harden. Harden has become so accustomed to that isolation basketball. And listen, it's successful when, he, when, he's in a, when he's in a system to do it. We see in Philly immediately. But now, if Ben Simmons is going to be any or have any type of impact on the offensive side of the ball, he needs to be that screen and, and, and facilitate type of guy. Do y'all remember who they coach is? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, fair, for, but you got to remember though, that Kevin Durant for, also for has one, some say in some things. I mean, you have a point, but then again... When we look at Golden State, their offense was completely different with Draymond, Steph, and Clay than it was when KD got there. Oh, when, fair, K, fair. when KD got there, it was more ISO heavy, and that's why the Houston Rockets. Were, would you say so? It was. Yeah, it yeah. definitely yeah. was. Yeah. Definitely, hundred percent. No, definitely, was. Harden was leading the league in scoring off isolation no, baskets. No, but we're by far. No, I'm we're talking about we're talking about KD, Kyrie. The, I'm sorry, KD, no, no, Curry, the Warriors, Clay, and the Dre. Warriors with KD. It was more ISO than usual mm. than when it was just no, the big. Well, I feel like it was a lot of ball movement. In a, no, in it was still a lot of ball movement. In the playoffs for Kevin. In the playoffs, in the playoffs. Typically, you yes, saw when they got really Remember when Katie, heavy. Kirk, Katie and Kerr had a problem because Kerr kept running the this, ball movement system in the playoffs. Katie didn't yeah. like that. He felt like sometimes against the Clippers ISO. specifically, no, you're just saying? in general, he felt like sometimes you needed to go ISO down the stretch. That's where the shift was between them two. Right. So that's that's where the problem. And for was. me, I think. I'm sorry. Go ahead, OG. For me, Katie had to. Katie had to. He had to. He had to taper his game. Yep. Yeah. During that time, it wasn't that it was ISO heavy. He was just an ISO player being implemented in a ball movement system. For sure. Now, yep. to add to your point about isolation basketball, well, we all know that that doesn't work in the playoffs because it's easy to guard. It's very James easy Harden. to guard. Now, when you're in a regular season and you got different teams that have less time to prepare for guys, it's completely different as opposed to when I got a week to prepare for James Harden. I got a week to prepare for Joel Embiid. And if all you're going to do is stand out on the perimeter and pound the basketball like Kyrie Irvin, who, by the way, is impossible one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not no going to fight that. No I, will, I will not even – that's not even a – anybody to try to argue that, I'm taking the headphones off and we're done. But <laughs> with that being said, that's, it, it, it is easy to guard – simply because there is no ball movement. When you got ball movement, you got people moving. When you got people moving, that means that the defense is off balance. But when you don't have ball movement, we got a lot of people standing around. You got a stagnant offense. So yeah. I don't think that's a recipe for winning. Yeah, without a doubt. But I think with the Nets, the why I look at them as a bit of outliers is because there are there's no team in the NBA that has two isolation scores as good as Ky Katie and Kyrie. Yeah. I think Katie yeah, and fact. Kyrie who can give you 30 on any in any single given night. 
I mean, they almost beat Milwaukee without Harden. Yeah, that's with was, Kyrie and KD, they, they, they were up on them. I think actually, if Kyrie's there, even without Harden, they win that series. Mm-hmm. And that was mostly off of just Kyrie and KD being who they are. Yeah, that's why, sure. you know, I think Ben Simmons playing a similar role to Draymond, I think it can work. But I think it'd be much more just pick and roll with Ben than no, him no doubt. than him at the top of the key and handling the basketball. Yeah. For mm. me, I think the Nets, if they can get if they can get healthy and if they're a playing team, I can see different scenarios. I can see them going up against the Chicago and beating them. Or I can see them being similar to what the Lakers were last year where we all think they're going to eliminate any team in the first round and they end up getting upset. I can see both scenarios happening. OG, I have a question for you. Um, so regarding that Bucks and Nets series last year, I want to know why you think, well, why do you have the Bucks over the Nets if, let's just say, all the Nets, the Nets are healthy, Ben Simmons is back with the additions of Seth, uh, Seth Curry, if Joe Harris can get healthy, Around Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, why do the Bucks, who I think have a great player in Giannis Antetokounmpo, but have two kind of inconsistent offensive secondary and third options in Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, why don't you have the Nets over them if they're the better offensive team? And now they got a Ben Simmons who can change the j- just change the aspect of the of basketball that they play, putting him on Giannis. Because I saw a statistic uh, the other day when he's Giannis's primary defender, he holds him to forty percent, and he's one of the best. The uh, ISO defenders in guarding Giannis. So I want to know why do you have the Bucks over the Nets, given that the Nets have two better offensive options and their team got more deep and well-rounded after the James Harden trade? Primarily Ken- because exactly what you said in terms of offense. You can't hide Ben Simmons. You can't do it in the playoffs. You could try to hide him, but you can't do so it. So you don't think you can and hide him with a five-out? With a five-out, you surround him with 40% no. three-point shooters you, you, on uh, no. outside? You can't? Mm-hmm. Even you if can't he's a small him. ball five? Mm-hmm. Okay. Even if you go small ball five, you cannot How hide do you, him. Wait, five are, out, he has the ball? Well, It has yeah. to be. Yeah, he can have the ball. I mean, you're there surrounded with teams. Seth. So Joe, a lot of, there's Katie, a lot of Kyrie. So, so you're taking, so you're taking Katie and Kyrie. You're taking the ball out of those two hands. And no, I know. And not, not, not the whole time. In, so, in some aspects, you can, you can use Ben as a roller. You can use Ben to initiate the offense. That's what I'm saying. He's versatile in that aspect. And now they gained a great defender. A lot of people forget that Ben Simmons was second in DPOI race last year. But I think and that's about, another option yeah. they that, have for Giannis as well. Absolutely. See, and that, I don't, part, that part I can definitely get with. However, mm-hmm. offensively, which is exactly what you talked about, mm-hmm. you have to score in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And Ben being a primary ball handler, now you're talking about a guy who completely switches up his role. You're having him play off the basketball? Because what we're going to do, in the words of Jalen Rose, if you got Ben Simmons on the floor, he's with us. <laughs> because you know he's not going to shoot. And that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem majorly going forward. Now, you can say Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant are going to take all the shots. We already know who Kyrie Irving is in terms of an offensive player. But we also know that at any point, he can break down also. That's so true. I can't with I can't with 100% certainty just ride with Brooklyn because they got Kyrie Irving and they got Kevin Durant. Kyrie Irving, his, well, in prime example, what happened last year? He yeah. got hurt. Yeah, well, Giannis, right? Giannis undercut him. If we're being fair, it was an undercut. L- like, come on, it was not. It wasn't an undercut though. Like, I get if it was a non-contact injury, you got it. I mean, he but he undercut him on the like, layup. It was like it, it, it was. A, I mean, no, it wasn't a layup. It was a rebound. And no, he, he made the he, he made just, the layup. He was standing there, and he was standing there, and it wasn't like he did it on purpose. No, I'm not. I'm not like implying. Just, I'm not like, implying that he like did. Zaza, like Zaza, did no, 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 no. I'm not implying that he did, but I don't think like I get Kyrie has a, a history of being unhealthy during the playoffs with his when the year he was with Boston, they were the first seed. Shoulder injury took him out. Broke his uh uh broke his knee in the finals in 2015, but those were most of those were non-contact injuries or injuries dwelling on him throughout the season. That one with Giannis, I don't think that you can really blame Kyrie for that. I think that it I'm was not, just it was just unlucky. And I'm not blaming him for that, but it did happen. It did, and it had, and, and it did happen to Kyrie Irving. Now again, I look at this Brooklyn team and the time that they need to get together. I do agree with you that. Brooklyn is a team who I don't think Miami in round one wants anything to do with Brooklyn. I don't think that they want anything to do with them. But with that also being said, Brooklyn is also that team. They could get bounced in round one. Absolutely they could because they haven't had enough time to mesh. They haven't had enough time to get that cohesive unit together and figure out what this guy is doing, what that guy is doing. It may sound good in the press, but ultimately when you get to the playoffs, we have, and not only when you get in the playoffs, when you get in the playoffs and guys – are scrambling and, 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 and roles are getting changed. We have to definitively know this is what I'm doing. 
And even when things go the other way, what is Ben Simmons going to give us? Can he just give us buckets? Can he just lock down? You know, can we go to him in the meat and potatoes of the game and he's got to go to the strike? How does he feel about that? We can't hide him in the playoffs. We can hide him in January. We can hide him in February. We can't hide him in the playoffs. And I think that's going to be a major issue.